What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to another short video taking a look at some basic tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5. So in this video we're going to roll a bit towards the more advanced end of the spectrum. Uh, I say that because this process will require you to do post-processing, uh, but we're going to be talking about focus bracketing or focus stacking. Now, this video is not going to be a practical demonstration on how to shoot a focus bracket or focus stack with the EOS R5. In this video, I'm only going to focus on the menu options and what the camera is doing. I will do another video in the future looking at the actual practical what you need to do in the field to shoot a focus bracket. So if you're looking to use focus bracketing or focus stacking. I'm probably going to use those words interchangeably throughout this video. You're looking for it on the shoot five menu. The entry is focus bracketing. Jumping into that menu, there are four options or four entries that you can choose from. The first entry is what does exactly what it says on the tin. It either enables or disables the focus bracketing mode on the camera. The second option controls the number of shots that the bracketing sequence will include. This can be set from uh, as few as two shots to as many as 999 shots. The third entry is set focus uh, increment, and this controls how much the focus will be shifted from each, or between each exposure. So the way this works is the camera makes an exposure, shifts the focus, makes an exposure, sh exposure, shifts the focus, and so on for as many shots as you have set in the number of shots. The expose or the focus increment is a you can set is between one and ten. Now. Canon doesn't in the manual tell you exactly what this means, and broadly speaking, I can't find an awful lot of documentation that says what, what the specifics are either. However, from my testing and based on Canon autofocus camera stuff in the past, I'm going to make the assertion that these numbers correspond to approximately one-eighth of a depth of field. Um, I'm making this assertion based on two things. First of all, one eighth of a depth of field was the smallest increment of autofocus adjustment that could be made on a Canon DSLR. So uh, uh, autofocus micro adjusts on those, as well as the smallest increment that you can make when precision stepping a lens in uh, remote shooting using the Canon desktop or the Canon EOS utility on the desktop to shift the focus of the lens. Uh, additionally, in testing this, when shooting with a depth or a, a focus shift setting of eight, the shift in depth of field that I see is approximately equal to a whole shift in depth of field. So that means that a value of one corresponds to approximately an eighth depth of field, a value of eight corresponds to approximately a whole depth of field, and a value of 10 corresponds corresponds approximately to one and a quarter depth of fields. Uh, the default, therefore, the default value of four is going to be approximately equal to half of the depth, half of a depth of field, which should generally be adequate in all but the most demanding cases of, uh, you know, shooting. You'll also note that as I'm talking here, I'm talking about things in depth of fields and not inches or millimeters or centimeters or something like that. That is because the camera will calculate how much to drive the focus system based on the focal length and the aperture value that you've selected. And subs or consequently, you also have to be considering that when you are setting the number of shots that you want the camera to take. Meaning, or the reason being that if you want the focus bracket to, for example, cover, say, two feet, and you're shooting with a very fast lens wide open, say, for example, a 50 f1.2, you're going to need uh, the, the size of each step in depth of fields is going to be small, or is the size of each step in millimeters versus depth of fields is going to be smaller because that fast aperture has a narrower depth of field. And therefore, you're going to need more exposures to cover that, say, two foot air distance versus if you were shooting at f11. And the camera will automatically calculate and can't compensate for this, so stopping down will it will result in bigger shifts that st stay within that depth of field jump. The final 
option in the menu is exposure smoothing. And according to the manual, exposure smoothing adjusts the ex or each exposure based on the differences between the displayed and actual F number. I don't know how Canon's doing this internally in the camera, if they're doing sort of a metering thing and making an adjustment based on the metering changes, or if they're actually calculating or, you know, the camera actually knows the actual F number versus the displayed F number. Uh, but generally the idea here is that all of the exposures should be the same brightness. However, because the F number describes the, relate, the ratio of the lens's focal length to the diameter of the aperture stop, as the focal length changes due to focusing, the F number will, the actual F number will change as well, which is going to change essentially the brightness of the image, as you could have a slightly faster or slightly slower actual aperture compared to the value that's displayed in the camera, which is, of course, rounded to photographic stops. Canon does note that three lenses specifically, this setting should be disabled for, and that is the EF 100mm f2.8 L macro IS USM, the EF 180mm f3.5 L macro USM, and the EF S 60mm f2.8 macro USM. Uh, it can cause issues with that, not providing even, uh, even adjustments, and they recommend disabling that. Now, as far as exposure smoothing goes, I can't provide a recommended value because it's going to vary depend on, depending on the software you use. Some software will do the compensation after the fact just fine, others can't. It will depend on the lens you're using because this is dependent on obviously the aperture changing. All lenses aren't going to change at the same in the same way because different lenses, different optical designs. And of course, it's going to depend on the focus distances that you're working in. So if you're shooting very close macro photography, there could be a much bigger focus shift than if you are a brightness shift exposure shift, that's the word I'm looking for, uh, for that kind of thing due to the shifting uh, or due to the macro distances versus, for example, shooting a, a landscape from six feet to infinity. So let's talk a little bit about limitations here. So first of all, when you engage the exposure bracket or the focus bracketing mode, the camera will automatically switch to shooting using the fully electronic shutter. Uh, additionally, it essentially shoots at the highest frame rate possible, so approximately 20 frames a second. Now, obviously, this comes with the caveat of it produces a 12-bit output when you're shooting RAW files. Uh, at the ISOs below 800, that obviously can mean that there's less dynamic range than you would have in the, fully elect or the electronic first curtain or fully mechanical shutter mode. It also means that there's no flash firing support. So if you're trying to illuminate your subject with a flash, that's not going to happen. And of course, because this is a rolling shutter, uh, electronic shutter, the uh, images can show banding issues with if there's a, a flickering light source illuminating the, the subject matter. The second consideration is that your lens must be set to autofocus. Um, Presumably, given some of the functionality that Canon cameras have, this would work if the lens was set, or could the camera could override the lens in manual focus mode, but Canon has decided to put a safety interlock, for lack of a better word, so that if you have your lens set to manual focus, this functionality will not go change the focus position on you. Uh, so be aware of that if this isn't working. And then of course, all the typical considerations for focus stacking does apply. So you will want to compose your image slightly looser than what you want in the final image to account for subtle camera uh, movements, alignment errors, and the changes in angle of view that happen as the lens focuses. You'll obviously want to shoot from a tripod because you need to keep the camera in the same place, especially if you're doing a large number of images in your focus stack. Uh, that said, in some very brief testing that I have done for very small stacks, say uh, less than 20 exposures, it can be possible to handhold uh, 
the camera with a stabilized lens and shoot that and get a workable image. However, the results are not very reliable and it is not something I would recommend relying on in the field uh, unless you absolutely, you know, absolutely have no other choice. Now, the final point here is post-processing. As I said, the reason I consider this a more advanced function of the camera is because nothing can be, uh, the only thing that happens in the camera is the focus shift and exposure generation. The camera cannot stack your images into one cohesive focus stacked result. So you will have to take your images, whether they're JPEG or RAW, and import them into some software that can do the actual focus stacking for you. Uh, this could be Adobe Photoshop, which can do this, has this capability and has for quite some time, or it could be a standalone tool such as Helicon Focus. Uh, there's even open source tools that can do focus stacking, uh, but you will need to process the images after the fact to get a stacked result. So I hope that sort of sheds some light on what's going on in the camera, at least when it comes to focus bracketing or focus stacking. If you found this useful or maybe informative, please consider smashing that like button. Uh, also, of course, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.